I feel like Daisy Jones. I am nothing if not unprepared. Vampire Bridgerton. <laughs> October TBR be damned. What's up? This isn't Jan. This is Joey. Oh, hey, I am not. Hi. Jan left her camera at home and gave me permission to intro her crammy vlog. So welcome to Jan's crammy vlog and Vampathon. Apparently, Vampathon is hosted by Jody. If you know Jody, she's that British gal that does all the books and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she's gonna fucking hate this and she's gonna totally record over this, but whatever. Jan's going to read some books in this like she always does and I'm gonna do her classic intro. What's up, it's Joey. And Jan is back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. But let's see here, she gave me some talking points. She told me that I need to mention the cramming vlog. For those of you who have never been part of a cramming vlog or seen one of her cramming vlogs, is where at the end of the month, she just decides to go balls to the wall and read as many books as she can. She knows some last minute reading, you know, just as much as she can get in there for, for her book count for the end of the month because if you know Jan, she stresses the f out when she doesn't read a lot in the month. Well, you guys don't really have to read the consequences of that, but I do. <laughs> she also wanted me to talk about Jody, so hi, Jody. Vampathon is from the 26th of October to the 31st on Halloween. Woo! That's pretty much all I wanted to do, and that's all she is allowing me to do. And I hope you enjoy this exclusive intro from yours truly. Love you. Bye. <laughs> I can't shut this off. Ah! Hi, it's me now, by the way. Shout out to Joey for that exquisite intro. I'll talk to y'all later when we're not in public. Okay, hi. We're finally back. Thank you to Joey, once again, for that very professional intro. <laughs> like he said, it's Vampathon, and it's also gonna be my cramming vlog. My Crampathon. My Crampathon vlog. I got this new coffin board. Joey's friend gifted it to me. I kinda love it, to be honest. They're like little bats, headstones, and spider webs, and all these little spooky emojis, and there's also like festive holiday ones. So I'm starting my cramming vlog today. It's the 25th. If you don't know what it is, oh, Joey already explained it. He did his research. He understood the assignment, but Vampathon, goes until Halloween starting on Saturday tomorrow yeah tomorrow and we're actually gonna start the readathon off by getting Halloween flash tattoos and I'm actually gonna get vampire fangs right here and then possibly just a jack-o-lantern right here they're $40 each so we're like yeah it's been years since Joey's last tattoo and it's been way over a year for me since my little ghosty tattoo tattoo why did I say it? my Chicago came out we're gonna do that tomorrow we're also gonna have like a spooky party just us two we're gonna make these jack-o-lantern stuffed peppers or at least try to we're gonna paint some pumpkins or at least try to I have to buy my parents dinner because while we're at the tattoo place they're gonna be doing us a little favor so I have to repay them with dinner so tomorrow's kind of a packed day Sunday is way less of a packed day but Joey said he wants to do this like bookish photo shoot on Sunday where I wear this sweater this bookish sweater that has like fall leaves it's a knit sweater I forgot what the company's name was Joey's friend also got me that sweater so I was like oh my god it's like a pricey sweater I need to like do a whole photo shoot. Well, Joey actually was like, oh my god, you'd look so good in like an autumn leaves photo shoot in the forest preserve or whatever. So we're doing that Sunday. It's gonna be a fun, spooky weekend. We just saw CJ lead. I hugged her, okay? I asked her first. 
Okay, because we love consent. I hugged her. She recognized me from Bookstagram and she signed Mayfly, of course. Y'all know I read American Rapture as an e-arc and it wasn't my favorite. I kind of want to reread it now that I know behind the scenes stuff, but Mayfly is my baby. I'm excited for this weekend. I'm excited for this last week of October. I'm sad that it's the last week, but I'm excited for Vampathon. This was created by my friend Jody, as Joey said, and I don't know why I'm pointing over there. He's not standing over there. She also kindly asked me to co-host a Again, for the second year in a row. I'm honored. Honored. Like her aesthetic is just, ugh. Actually, these bleeding tapered candles were inspired by her. I actually discovered her channel from Vampathon like four years ago or whatever, and she was using these, and I was like, I need those in my life, and I finally got some. Anyway, I guess y'all are waiting for my TBR of some sort, right? First of all, this is a very loose TBR because I don't have the prompts in front of me. I'm not gonna go through every single prompt. I'm gonna try to get a bingo. I'm just trying to finish my October TBR, which is two more books. Read at least one book from my 24 for 2024, a couple library books, and then like mood reading as much as I can. Here's a loose TBR. These are the two that are on my October TBR, A Discovery of Witches, which is a chonker. I don't know if this is gonna happen. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. This is not my priority at the moment. If this is the only book I don't read off of my TBR this month, I'll be okay. One day. And then we used to live here. Everyone's talking about it. I think there's a horror thriller book prompt. This is perfect to sink your teeth into. I'm actually gonna use that for this book, but I'm officially buddy reading this with Sash from Sash Reads. She's one of my long-term subscribers, patrons, friends here on booktube. She just got her copy. We both love Anna Huang. It was her idea to like stretch the prompt of a book to sink your teeth into for this, and I was like, oh, perfect. Or I, I was gonna say also like read in the dark because I have a little book light now that I love oh so dearly. I'm 44 pages in and already loving it. It's a sports romance. I'm not a sports romance girly, but I could be after this. I could see it. I got my Carmilla patrons vote for for which 24 for 2024 book I should continue slash start slash try to finish during Vampathon. They chose Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chapeco, which is perfect because it's a vampy book. I started it two years ago already and it's by a Filipino author. And October, if you didn't know, is also Filipino Heritage Month. So it truly is the best month of the year, okay? I got to page like 15 and then I paused because I got intimidated by like the world and everything. But this is pitched as Castlevania. When I saw Castlevania, I was like, I need this book. And then my friend Jayla sent this to me two years ago, like right when it came out. I still have yet to read it and I feel so bad. And she actually offered to send me the sequel and I was like, girl, I haven't even read the first one yet. I'm so sorry, but it will happen. I also realized recently that I put this on my 24 for 2024 and the challenge is to read it or I have to unhaul it by the end of the year. And I don't unhaul gifts and this is a gift. So I have to read it regardless. I'm gonna be starting this over since it is only 15 pages and I'm gonna try to sink my teeth into this one too. And then we have the third Gilmore Girl, which I'm gonna try to finish like early tomorrow. I'm not really in the mood to read a nonfiction right now, but it's Miss Emily Gilmore. I have to. So she's an exception, but I think next year I'm not gonna do my one nonfiction a month. I cut down all my monthly goals for next year to five, but we'll talk about that in like the January book tag or whatever, you know? I I have been enjoying this so far. I am 67 pages in. Sorry, this is the longest intro ever, but at least y'all got clips of my night before this. Anyway, I went to the Kelly Bishop event. I've been loving author events and so has Joey. Joey just said to me like, I actually love these. It's kind of inspiring. I like hearing them talk. It's interesting. I'm like, yes, perfect. You're perfect. Marry me. But yeah, we also went to the Kelly Bishop event and that was iconic. Ugh, I can't even explain how much I love Kelly Bishop. But that doesn't really fit any prompts other than my nonfiction goal of the month. And then we have three library books. We have a graphic novel based on The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which I have not read, but this is just called Hollow. I got it from the library and there is a spooky graphic novel prompt. There's a spooky middle grade prompt and I want to read Empty Smiles by Katherine Arden. So I could also check off a whole series. I rarely finish series. I'm so bad at finishing series. So when I do, it's like monumental. This is the fourth book in the Small Spaces Quartet. I don't even know what it's actually called. Oh, book four of the Small Spaces Quartet. Wow. Sometimes I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I know shit about stuff, but this is, I think, sound at a carnival and there are maybe killer clowns. I don't know, but these are pretty creepy for middle grades in my opinion. But if I don't get to this one, I do have this little thing. It's so small. It's called Cruel Nature by D.B. Albiza. Seven terrifying tales to trouble your sleep. And look how creepy this is. I read the synopses and stuff and they're like fucking creepy. And this is middle grade. So I could read that too if I'm feeling it. The illustrations in this are crazy. And then we have Coup de Grace by Sophia Ajram. And this is just a short little thing. This has a lot of commentary on depression and anxiety, I think. 
someone's trapped somewhere. This I just want to read because I've been seeing it every time I search horror books of 2024, but I've never heard anyone talk about it like on booktube or bookstagram. So that's also a possibility. And then I want to do a little bit of a book haul just really quickly because Joey bought four books and I bought one. So this is the one I bought. I bought Necrology. CJ Lead was at our favorite bookstore, Bucket of Blood. It's the one that Gabby and I went to and the one Joey and I go to all the time. But I bought Necrology. I've been eyeing this book for months now. It sounds a little bit culty. Salem Witch Trials. It just sounds like a bunch of girly girls that are also creepy. It reminds me of Bunny. Not only because of the bunny ears on the cover, but description also sounds a little bit like Bunny. I don't know. I could be wrong. And it's so small too. And it's one of those with a spine on the spine. I love the way this is shaped. And then Joey got the story of the eye because CJ Lee talked about it. He got the other. He's never seen this until today. And then a Judith sonnet book, The Summer Never Ends. I don't know what any of these are about. Do Not Disturb by John Athan. And that is another killer clown. I've been obsessed with clowns since watching it for the first time. That's everything. I'm tired. Sorry for the long ass clip. I'll update y'all when I have any type of reading updates. Otherwise, it's like 9 30 p.m. and I haven't eaten dinner yet. So I'm gonna do that. And I'll for sure see y'all when we're about to go get our tattoos. A few moments later. Oh my god, I cannot believe I forgot to say I also want to try to read New Moon because I have these amazing paperbacks that are dusty now. These were gifted to me by Sarah from Sarah Shelves and Claire from Clary Books, I think is her Instagram handle. They split the cost and it was so sweet, but I've never read New Moon and I think I read Twilight. Oh, I read Twilight for a full moon readathon. I've never read New Moon, so I want this to be the time. I can't believe I forgot about it. But yeah, this would be vampire book to movie. There's blood on the cover, vampire main character, paranormal romance. This fits so many prompts. We're gonna try to get at least one bingo this week in the midst of all the events. That's my very loose TBR. We'll find out together what I end up reading. I think my main priorities are New Moon, Third Gilmore Girl, Silver Under Nightfall, and The Striker. Those are my main priorities. October TBR be damned, but I would love to get to We Used to Live Here too. So essentially this is my crazy ass TBR, but who knows at this point? Who fucking knows? Good morning. Happy day one of Vampathon. I'm getting FOMO. I'm not gonna lie. I told myself and I told y'all that I'd finish the third Gilmore Girl first before anything else. I have been working on it. I did not wake up super early today, which sucks, but I got up at like seven something, did my morning stuff, and then I edited and uploaded a Patreon video. Then Joey got me Duncan, and now I've been reading, but I'm not feeling like reading a nonfiction because everyone has been posting and tagging their TBRs and and I just want to read something cute and spooky. So if I'm being smart, I think I should read Hollow, the graphic novel, and check that prompt off, get that under my belt, gain momentum. And this is a good day to do it because I'll be in the car for a little bit, like to go to and from the tattoo place. But then we have like stuff going on. So I don't know how much reading I'd actually get done. So the smart thing to do to get my 100 pages of the day as well is to start with a graphic novel, right? I've never read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, but I heard this one's really good regardless, so I think I'm gonna do that. Start that in the car, and I'll just like chip away at this throughout the first couple days of Vampathon, because I'm on page 109 now. Honestly, such a queen. I didn't realize she doesn't have kids, and she talks about not wanting them and all the like backlash that she got for not wanting kids since she was a kid, and she's been unapologetic about it ever since, and I was like, queen shit. Honestly, she's still talking about her earlier jobs in her career, so Gilmore Girls hasn't even really been delved upon yet, so my brain is just kind of la 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 throughout the whole thing but she does talk about her husband who was a gambling addict a couple guys she's dated prior to him people she's met along the way she met morgan fucking freeman when they were both dancers that was probably the wildest thing so far and she's just so funny and like her interactions with her mom all the things that she does just like taking leaps of faith the universe like giving back to her when she least expects it when she manifests it's just an incredible story i love a good memoir when i'm in the mood for it but right now I am not. So I'm gonna read Hollow and not do Miss Bishop a disservice. And that's the plan. I will talk to y'all when I'm, I don't know, probably after our tattoos, to be honest, probably hit you with some B-roll. And we're gonna try to actually get good vlog footage. <laughs> I feel like I've been on and off with like good vlog footage. I don't even know what that means, but just going back and editing and then rewatching my videos with Joey afterwards, I'm just like, mm, I could do better. I could always do better. Okay, I've decided I'm also gonna bring this because it's short and I forgot that Gabby's also hosting her short and spooky readathon on Patreon. This is short, this is spooky. If I read these two, I'd complete her readathon too.
poor man's pumpkin patch. Let's pick a couple. We're gonna paint them tonight. Bit. Okay, y'all. Let's pick one. Ooh. Oh, that one's dirty. I don't like the dirty ones. <gasps> this one's a cutie patootie. A nice canvas. I don't even know what I want. This was me in high school. <laughs> this is what I looked like in high school. All right. Yeah, we need a good canvas. I picked the perfect pepper. Perfect pepper for the perfect, perfect girl. Perfect pepper. All right, so we got brownie pumpkins. Big Debra's. Big Debra's. We got bag of bones. The cinnamon sugar kind, because that was the only one that was there. And then butter pecan Dunkin' K-Cups. And then baked hot Cheetos, because they're the best, and I will die on this hill. Oh, also, here's our tattoos. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's one of mine. There's the other one. Happy Vampathon, bitches. <laughs> yeah, the little devil guy. There's this little devil guy. And then I got a spooky little ghost. That's Joey. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking broke this. We're gonna see if it doesn't sutter. Oh. First book done! This is obviously for the spooky graphic novel prompt. It could either be my short or spooky for Gabby's readathon. I'm giving this four stars. I really enjoyed it. The art style was super cute. Characters were super cute. Gordo, the pumpkin, was my favorite. His personality was incredible. But like the art style and the colors that are used, like there's a lot of blues on some pages, but then there are also like oranges and yellows on some. But yeah, four stars, it was a fun time. I really like these panels with the Sleepy Hollow Fall Festival or whatever. The Halloween kickoff festival, super cute. It's just a bunch of teenagers who are trying to solve this situation. And there's this headless horseman that they encounter. They find out there's this evil thing going on. And so they're trying to figure out who it is. It's really obvious who it is. And then they like try to defeat them. So super simple concept and plot line. So four stars, it was a fun time. I didn't want to think too deeply about it. Would I reread this? I don't know. It's not really as good as pumpkin heads like it's not up there for me for my favorite graphic novels honestly it's probably like a strong three for me but for gordo we'll give it a four i'm obviously gonna do a fun fact on sleepy hollow because if you're new here i try to do fun facts for every book that i read a lot of times i forget but sometimes i don't and i'm gonna try to be good about it in this vlog the name sleepy hollow is an anglicized version of the dutch name sleeper shaven sorry i don't know dutch i have no idea if i said that anywhere remotely close to correct which means sleep Haven. For some reason, I feel like I did a fun fact on this already because I remember reading the authors who are resting in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery before. The Headless Horseman is based on a Hessian soldier who was beheaded during the Revolutionary War. There you go. A couple fun facts for you. Ew, I just got a text about Black Friday sales. Girl, let me get through Halloween first. So yeah, next up, I'm gonna try to finish Coup de Grasse. Hopefully I finish it today. I already know this is gonna be confusing as fuck. I knew 14 pages in that I was gonna be so confused, but there are already quotes that I love, that I've laughed at, that are so relatable to just like life in general and like getting older, thinking you know everything, but like life just keeps hitting you with shit you don't know. Definitely check trigger warnings because like I said, it talks a lot about depression and anxiety and all the triggers that come with that. So I'm gonna be working on this until we have to start making dinner because I'm actually helping this time. What a concept, except I'll just be the carver and Joey's gonna cook everything. All right, I'll talk to y'all when I have another update or when we're making our peppers. Good evening. It's go time, spooky friends. <laughs> <laughs> we were in sync for a while there. All right, we got the peppers. The peps. And I'm gonna attempt to cut them. We have this pumpkin carving kit from Twisted. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, what? It's Sleepy Hollow. Oh, that's weird. And I just finished Hollow. How thematic. My God, what are you doing? Sorry, Twisted Retreat. But yeah, look at these good ass quality pumpkin yeah, carvers. Good ass. Oh my God. All right, let's do this. Cooking Mama taught me right. Ugh, just sprayed my face. Who needs a spoon when you've got acrylic nails? All right, time to carve. I'm scared. I'm so scared. Oh, I didn't, I wasn't supposed to throw out the top. It touched the garbage, I'm gonna wash it. 
y'all didn't see that. Oh, I got an eye. We've got an eye. We're keeping it classic. Okay, we're not doing some funky shit. We have got eyes, people. Look at them. Look me in the eyeball. Next time I'm pissed, I'll leave my fist at the drywall. Next time, there will be no next time. I apologize, even though I know it's lies. Tired of the games, I just want it back. I know I'm alive. She ever trust to fucking leave again? I'm a tired to the bed and set this house on fire. I'm gonna give it some fangs. Sure. Okay. Ooh. Sprayed my eyeball. I should've worn protective goggles. <laughs> He's looking a little derpy. Get him. <laughs> He's got fangs. Ah, cute. Cutie. Okay, next one. I fucked this part up. This is like really fucking fun. <laughs> I can't believe I'm not messing this up. This is beautiful. It's not perfect, but it's beautiful. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. Yep. We did it. We did it. We did it. Did it. Did it. Look how cute they are. Besties. Need your reaction. Oh, they look good. <laughs> Aren't they so cute? Oh my god, they look so good. <laughs> Thanks. I'm so proud. You should be. I threw away one of the lids and I realized I shouldn't have done that, so I had to wash it. Oh, that's okay. I'll take that one, whatever. I don't care. Well, you look at their little teeth. I know their fangs. <laughs> they look so good. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why is it laying down? Did he put on a spooky outfit? Oh, look at him. He's a little sad. Oh, he's a little sad. You gonna put on his hat? <laughs> Cute. Oh, look, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at mine. He's got a beret on. Look at mine. He's like, kill me. <laughs> Just kill me. Oh my god. Tink. It's not Pinterest, but it's good enough. It's good enough. Like us. Yeah. We're good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Peppers were a success. Well, they looked kind of depressed, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, they were in a lot of heat, a lot of stress. And then I had one of those brownie pumpkin things. So good, super sweet, but so good. In terms of reading, I'm still gonna continue to read, but oh shit, I just lost my page. I think I'm on page 76, yeah. The writing, spectacular. I am in awe of this author's talent. This is probably one of the shortest books I've read this month and the most quotes that I've written down in my favorite quotes of the month that I post on Patreon every month. It's just so bleak and just honest. It's like a different take on the human experience. I think I'm starting to understand that this is all a metaphor for just her brain and how dark gray everything is and how she feels like she can't escape it. But then there's this other character, Parishma, I think, that I'm confused about. I don't know if that's something with her subconscious or if it's someone she knew in real life. I don't really know what's going on, I'm not gonna lie, but I just know I'm having a good time with the writing and just the word choice and the way things flow, even though they don't fully make sense to me. Beautiful, beautifully done, brilliant, love it. I don't think it'll be five stars with all that being said, but it'll most likely be a four for the writing. If the writing weren't as good as it is, it'd be a three just because it's so confusing. I'm gonna continue reading, I'll talk to you later. I also forgot to mention that we just watched the original Frankenstein for the first time. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> As I was saying, we watched a Frankenstein movie. It was interesting, a lot more morbid and intense than I thought it would be. And it was short, and so was this book. I wanted to read you a couple quotes, if you don't mind. I kinda wanna read like three, okay? Not to be like pretending this is slam poetry or something, but I wanna read it. <laughs> Sometimes I think there are moments in life that are so memorable to me because of their impact, only to later find that they were forgotten by others almost immediately. Like, hello, how fucking sad. What scars some is but a glance off the armor to others. The brightly burning Polaris of your life is nothing but a dim star already faded and forgotten in the descending dawn of someone else's. Like, ow, stab me in the fucking heart, why don't ya? This one I just read out loud to Joey. Of course I wanna be better. The sheer fucking mental resilience it takes me to keep walking is nothing short of Olympic. It steals hours away in piecemeal increments. How can I run when what terrorizes me is everywhere? It doesn't come and get me, it just presents itself. It waits in plain daylight for the day I am too exhausted to say no. See what I mean? It's like very metaphorical for like depression and everything that goes on in your head. There's also a lot about grief in this. Last quote, it's a whole passage where it starts with 
tell me. It really hits like halfway through. It goes, tell me I'm not beyond help. Tell me the horse shit I tell myself to get through the nights isn't the impulse of a hopeful delusion. Tell me we're supposed to care. And then, and this is the key part, tell me that everyone's just doing the best they can. Insist on it because the truth is, aren't we? Wow, 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 wow. Joey's reading a book that is 133 pages and he's on page 59. He started earlier tonight. My book is 136 pages and I'm on page 81. So we'll see if we're able to finish both our books tonight. That'd be grand. I do have an energy drink that I could crack open, but I'm not gonna drink the whole thing because it's already past 10 p.m. Whenever I drink like even half an energy drink late at night, it never bodes well for me in the morning. So I'm gonna do that. I'll probably end up talking to y'all maybe in the morning, depending how ugly I feel after finishing this book, she said hopefully. But yeah, most likely tomorrow morning. Good night. Happy day one of Vampathon. I lied, I'm back with glasses on now and my little hood up with the fangs. First of all, I forgot to mention that it's always weird when I pick up two books back to back and they're kind of similar in certain ways. This one and Hollow had characters named Vic. This one is Vicken. The other one was Vicky. Also, they meet a ghost there and then they ask a couple times, would you like to meet this ghost? That's kind of wild. But on another note, I forgot to mention that we did not paint pumpkins today nor carve them. We're still planning on painting them. Hopefully tomorrow we can stop by somewhere to get paints because I thought my paint situation was a lot better than it is. I only have like little pots from my paint by number projects, which I still might finish, you know, so I don't want to waste. It's not enough for a pumpkin is what I'm saying. I thought I had tubes of paint, but I feel like I threw them out when we moved. So we might just go to Michael's or something and buy a pack of like basic paint. I still don't know what to do with my pumpkin. I now have 36 pages left. We can do this. Bye for real, I think. Hello, hello. I'm wearing my cute new bookish sweater and I'm so excited about it. Although my back has been fucking killing me this entire morning so far. I tried to go back to sleep and I couldn't sleep. I have scoliosis if you didn't know, so it's like a constant problem. It's been getting worse, I feel like, even though they told me it wouldn't. Anyway, I have made some executive decisions this morning. Started two more books. I started We Used to Live Here, finally. See, my back's like literally affecting my breathing and it's getting, anyway, y'all don't care. I'm 32 pages in. Right off the bat, it starts exactly what the synopsis said with this family knocking on this girl's door, being like, hey, I grew up in this house. My kids kind of want to see where I grew up. I want to give them a tour. Do you have 15 minutes? It's cold out here. Can I wait in the foyer, the foyer, while you ask your girlfriend? Because she was like, let me ask my girlfriend because she's not home and like we just moved in and I just want to make sure it's okay. Girlfriend didn't answer. She lets them in anyway. Right after this book states that like she is ever cautious and she doesn't trust strangers. But then she says she's a people pleaser and it's like, <laughs> There's a line between people pleasing and stupidity, my dude. This was dumb. And you just know, you get like this eerie feeling because they're like walking around her house and like making all these comments. I just like that there was no dilly dallying. Right from the get go, we get into the thick of it basically. Not the thick of it, I'm sure there's a lot more thickness because <laughs> I've heard wild things about this book. But yeah, this will be for my, well, I already did the horror prompt for coup de grace. I think this could be also classified as a thriller to some extent. So I could just use it for the thriller prompt. I'm gonna fact check on Goodreads and see if it's classified as a thriller one way or another. I'm sure it is because it is fast paced like a thriller. But I also started, restarted Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chapeco. I got to page 22, which is farther than I got the first time I tried to read this two years ago. The writing is just so beautiful. It's wild because I had some annotations in the first 15 pages saying I've never read anything like this before. Honestly, in the past two years, I have. So 2022 Jan was such a different reader from 2024 Jan and it was kind of cool to see that in my previous annotations and I would be curious to see other books like that that I've read years and years ago and see my annotations upon reread. This is really good. This is a vampire story about Remy who's a vampire killer, a reaper or whatever and he is after whoever he's told to kill basically and we meet this lady Denera, I don't know. It seems to be they used to be lovers and she's just recently turned and she's like the daughter of some higher up 
up and she was attacking him and he ended up doing something violent to her and I don't really know what the actual objective is just yet. A terrifying new breed of vampire is sighted outside the city. Remy prepares to investigate alone, but then he encounters the shockingly warm-hearted vampire heiress Xiao Dan Song and her infuriatingly arrogant fiance, vampire lord Zidon Malik, who may hold the key to defeating the creatures, though Remy knows associating with them won't do his reputation any favors. Remy faces a choice. I love when characters face a hard choice. I don't know what it is about it, but it's riveting to me. The writing is spectacular. It doesn't feel info dumpy. Am I gonna remember everything? No, but I'm just rolling with it. It definitely gives all the vampire vibes right from the start, so I am loving that. Kind of nervous though. I'm gonna chip away at that, but I also want to make good progress if not finish the third Gilmore Girl today. That would be ideal, but Joey and I are gonna go to brunch soon. It's Sunday. I'm feeling a little bit anxious, but the pain from my back is at least distracting me from that, so it's a pick your poison situation always in this household. <laughs> It's Monday afternoon and I'm home because my allergies have been so bad. I'm like 99% sure it's because we went to the forest preserve yesterday and I probably like inhaled pollen and whatever the fuck else I'm allergic to in those trees. So I had to go home because I have not stopped sneezing. Literally, it's been hard to go five minutes straight without sneezing. I feel one brewing right here right now. I'm gonna try to resist because that would not be cute. And it sucks because I wasted wearing a cute spooky outfit. But that's okay. I should probably take it off so it doesn't get dirtier. I'm almost done with the third Gilmore Girl. I just had lunch. My patrons are doing some Discord sprints, so I joined. I have 25 pages left of this book, so I can finally check off my nonfiction book. And then the only monthly goal I have left for the month is read a Kindle book. And I think I'll just do that on Halloween. I'll find something short or I'll try to finish Sunlight by Devney Perry that doesn't fulfill any prompts. Maybe I can find a witchy novella or something. I'll do my research. But but yeah, so I'll finally finish this. It's definitely gonna be five stars. Obviously, it's a memoir. I rarely ever rate memoirs less than five stars. It made me cry this morning. I actually went to the gym at like 5.30 in the morning. I did dishes. It was a productive morning. I read more of this and I cried because she talks about her fake husband's death, Ed Herman, the actor, when he died. She also obviously talks about her real husband's death. Their love reminds me of Joey and I and it's just like so cute. Like she talks about how much they're like not only husband and wife, but they're best friends. She hated leaving him for work and she actually liked learning golf and stuff So they never had to be apart. They found something that they like doing together and so cute I just love her and her attitude towards life, you know following her instincts and just trusting the process and letting life come her way And it's so inspiring truly. So yeah, I'm gonna sit here and finish this I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to check any prompts off with this. I'll figure that out If not, that's okay. I'm gonna try to get a hundred pages into we used to live here and 50 pages into Silver Under Nightfall. It would be amazing if I really get into it and get 100 pages in, but we're not gonna be overly ambitious. But I do have more time now that I'm home early, so I'm not gonna waste any more of it. I'm gonna read. I'll talk to y'all when I finish this. I mean, you already know my rating, so maybe I'll talk to you when I have another update. So I took a nap. Don't mind my smudged makeup because I'm still... Joey got me Allegra and I took one. It helped for a little bit, but I've been sneezing once again. My eyes have been watering. I just hit page 60 in Silver Under Nightfall and I think I've gotten to the point where I'm only like 60% confused. I was telling Joey, I'm like, okay, as opposed to like 90% confused, I'm like 60%. Chapter 4, when he meets this particular character, their banter was so cute and I was like, okay, this dialogue, I'm living for it. It's flowing faster. There's not a lot of world building in this chapter. It's just them interacting. I truly really am a character driven reader because that's when I was starting to get giddy and I'm like, okay, I can get invested in these characters eventually, I think. Once I get the fundamentals of the world and who hates who, the types of vampires and who's trying to kill who and whatever else. It's slowly forming, okay? We're slowly forming lumps in my brain. Ridges and lumps and valleys and bumps. Have a smooth brain. 
pain. No ridges or lumps or valleys or bumps. All ideas slide right off. We know for sure Remy is a reaper, okay? And there's this Lady Daenera who got turned into a vampire and he used to love, I guess. Apparently, you, there are only a few people who can survive being turned into a vampire. The better choice, people say, is to kill them before they fully turn into a vampire. And then there's this whole like reaper law situation. There's like a gala going on and it's like Vampire Bridgerton, <laughs> basically, which is such a vibe. I think I'm gonna switch to we used to live here just to try to make some headway into this and then i'll just switch back and forth because they are different enough where i could do that without getting fully confused but i'm also thinking so if i finish this book i'll be able to check off the thriller prompt and then to get a bingo my first bingo possibly my only bingo i need a book with witches and i was looking for witchy novellas couldn't find any maybe i could do like a witchy graphic novel there's too much going on all i know is i don't feel 100 percent, which sucks but this is looking good for now. I hope it's a five star because it has potential. Okay, I'm gonna switch to this. Hi, we're at this odd angle and I'm suffering. Everything's congested. The lighting is worse than I thought it would be down here. I reached my 100 page goal and we used to live here. I'm 106 pages in. It is flying. I was really nervous that I would drag through the beginning of this for some reason. I thought it'd be hard to get into. Maybe because of all the hype, but no, it, it's fast and riveting from the get-go. It's creepy as fuck. There's also some religious thing going on. There are these like forums in between chapters that sometimes explain things like factually kind of. And there are like Wikipedia pages. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like Reddit threads. I don't know. There are dumb decisions being made and there are creepy things happening with this family. And now a character is nowhere to be found. People just keep disappearing, but then coming back in creepy ways. And this basement, I just, I don't even know how you could just do these things. I mean, I guess if these people weren't stupid, there would be no story. It's stressing me out, but it's good. The hype is real with this one. I think this is definitely one where I would agree with the hype. I'm ecstatic about the movie. I'm so curious now how they're gonna adapt this with all this creepy shit. Now this family is snowed in in this house and I just like don't think I would have let them back in. I don't think I would have let them in in the first place, but back in? And these children are not helping the situation. The mom is a piece of shit. She literally called their relationship lifestyle choices and we all know what that means. That's my take on this. I'm excited to finish this and hopefully I can finish it like maybe tomorrow night. And this is the second to last book on my October TBR. Can you believe it? Because I can't. I don't know what is happening with my makeup. Sorry, it looks like I have a black eye, but like I'm struggling. <laughs> if I'm not sneezing, I'm coughing. My second to last book on my TBR. The last book on my October TBR is A Discovery of Witches. And I just remembered I also have the audiobook. So that's still a possibility, but also I don't really want to rush A Discovery of Witches. So don't hate me if I skip out on that one again for another month. Cause I've been trying to read that for like two or three years now. My stepdad's actually watching the show. So now I have like even more FOMO. Cause every time I go over there, he's watching it. Or I'm sure he's gonna be watching it now. Cause I think he just started it this past weekend. I'm also really scared because I know it's gonna be really good, but I know it's slow for a lot of the beginning is what everybody says. So I'm just not ready for it. I keep thinking I'm ready for it, but I think next time when I'm in the mood for it, I just need to bite the bullet and just go. I'll have the majority of the books done. Maybe I'll start a discovery of witches in this vlog. Who knows? I'm glad I'm loving this so far. I'm gonna rough edit while we watch a horror movie and end the night and I'll probably talk to y'all tomorrow. So I've read a lot today. Good night, I guess. Wow, the sun is doing its thing. Good morning. I just wanted to pop on here before I have to leave for work. Did you just fart? <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally leaving that in. On that note, I just wanted to say thank you for 11,000. 11,000. 11,000. That's crazy. I've said it before, but 8,000 was my goal for this year. Y'all surpassed it. Y'all said A++. Thank you, that's all. Here's the look. Isn't it cute? These are Halara pants. Use code JAN15 for 15% off. Oh no, I, it literally says swipe or no swiping and I just swiped. Joey usually hears my alarms and I'm usually in the bathroom getting ready. So I had to indicate whether he snoozes it or swipes it. At 8.10, I have to snooze it every five minutes because like 8.25, that's when I really have to go or else I'm late. So I put swipe or no swiping as the alarm name because Joey just kept getting confused. Anyway, I read a little bit more of each of my books. We used to live here in Silver Under Nightfall. I'm liking both and all I want to do is read.
and I have to do adult things. So stupid. It's Tuesday. I'm gonna try to stay up late and read as much as I can. I want to finish We Used to Live Here. That's the ultimate goal. But I also want to get to at least page 100 of Silver Under Nightfall because I did not hit that goal yesterday. I got to like 67 this morning. Okay, I gotta go. I need coffee. But I hope y'all like this artsy fartsy lighting we got going here. Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. It's hot. It's gonna be 80 degrees today again. What the fuck? Another milestone. Another balloon, baby. <laughs> I don't have my hype button. I'll do your hype button. I'm always your hype button. Y'all know the drill. Where is the hole? That's what he said. Or she said, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, yeah, you know. Your boat. Okay, ready? List lighting. Ignore it. I don't even know. I don't even care. I'm hungry. One. One. One subscriber. One subscriber. We'll do the shelf switch later. We're gonna get Red Robin. We're gonna celebrate because we celebrate everything in this household everything. multiple times. Did I buy two books today? Yep. Did I get my nails redone? Yep. And we're gonna get fucking burgers. Burgers. Okay, bye. <laughs> Look it. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Oh, wait. My hype button should be somewhere around here. Hello? Never mind. I can't find it. Oh. Oh my god, this background is so cute. I've never filmed in this angle before. Are you gonna focus or are my contacts just blurry? I can't tell. <laughs> I need to take my contacts out. Joey convinced me to buy three special edition books from Pango the other night. Here's one of them. I'm gonna put you down right here. I don't have my tripod, <laughs> but I'm gonna show you. Look how freaking adorable with the gold foil. Do I know what this is about? Nope. Have I read The Shadows Between Us? Nope. But this could be a standalone. So gonna be standing alone like me every day. Every day. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. And then I also bought these Dark Academia tabs because it was by the same seller. Look how fucking cute. Look it. Are you looking? There are plaid, candlesticks, keys. This says Academia. My lovely seller sent me some fairy tale stickers. Look how cute. They're upside down. I think this one's my favorite sheet because look at the fucking frog. The little crown. Look at him. Don't you want to just kiss him? And the hand with so the mirror. Do a print and then you can leave me. I also got this in the package. It was like $25 for all of this. The entire box, basically. This says, it is the little things in life that provide the most enjoyment. And it's a glass water bottle with a little thingy. I'd be so scared to bring this around though. Swing it around, it shatters it. Maybe I should just keep this at home, safe and sound. <laughs> this is really cute and it like all matches. And the scrunchie, I don't really use these types of scrunchies, but it's nice and silky. Isn't this supposed to be good for your hair? Poison study scrunchie. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna edit. I'm gonna have a good night. And you should too. Welcome to a brand new Wednesday. I have had an entire morning already without talking to y'all, so I'm sorry. I finished a book. I finished editing and uploading a video. I went on a walk that was not great because of reasons. I also went to the gym at six. So it's been a full morning and it's not even noon yet. It's 11.20. I should probably feed myself. But the book in question that I finished was The Lover by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Listen, I know this was on my TBR whatsoever. This wasn't even on my radar until yesterday. I was just looking at what was on Kindle Unlimited. They have all these Amazon original stories and I usually don't look into them. I saw this a couple times on Bookstagram, but I didn't know it was on KU and I didn't know it was a short story. So I just clicked on it because I was like, I need to read something on my Kindle. I don't think I'm going to finish Sunlight by Daphne Perry, which is a KU book that I started. This was like literally 40 pages, but I'm counting it because it's on Goodreads, okay, as an individual entity. This went a route that I was not expecting. I didn't expect any Thing out of this. I just saw the author, I saw the cover, I saw the title, and I'm like, I'm gonna read this. Long story short, I'm able to check off the paranormal romance prompt on our Vampathon bingo board. I started doubling up on prompts now, so I also read this in the dark last night. Part of it this morning too, but still. It was dark outside, okay? And then gothic setting, because this is a historical gothic fantasy. When I googled it, that's what it said. The fantasy part, I was not expecting, because I guess I didn't really look at the cover. That is a wolf, and a full moon, and a lady, and the title is called The Love. 
2 plus 2 equals 4. <laughs> you will probably be able to figure out what is going on. But I went into this blind as hell. I gave it 4 stars. I really enjoyed the writing. I like the discussions, commentary about being a woman in society in general and the expectations. I mean, I read a lot of books with that type of commentary, but I mean, it hits every time because it's so relatable. And basically, there's like some sort of love triangle. And then there's this paranormal part of it. I think it was perfectly paced. I think it was the perfect length as well. That's what she said. I don't know if I would read a full novel following these characters or their situation. I don't know, maybe. I think it was great as a short story. I would have read a longer short story. If this were like 100, 150 pages, I would read that. But like a full novel, I don't know about that. That's why I gave it a four. I feel like I kind of wanted more. But at the same time, I think it ended perfectly. I think the story played itself out perfectly. I should probably do a fun fact. So I looked up fun facts on wolves because there is a wolf on the cover. Wow, would, wouldn't this be great if it were in color? I would honestly love the color Kindle, but I don't need it. I don't need it. I do read graphic novels though. I'm actually about to read The Midwinter Witch by Molly Knox Ostertag on my Kindle because I got it from Libby yesterday and I want to check off the book about witches prompt or book with witches prompt for Vampathon. So I checked that out and then it'll give me my first bingo and I just needed that satisfaction to feel like I'm making some progress because it's Halloween Eve right now and this readathon and vlog ends tomorrow. So that's all to say I'm gonna read a graphic novel that wasn't on my plans, but are we surprised? Wolves can swim up to eight miles, which is wild because I can't even walk for eight miles. <laughs> I think I've only walked for eight miles like a countable number of times in my life, like on a hike or whatever. I don't think I would ever like consciously be like, I'm gonna go on an eight mile walk. <laughs> like what am I, Eminem? Anyway, I've been hosting sprints on Discord as always for Wednesdays and now I think I'm gonna take a little walk and read We Used to Live Here and hopefully finish it because I have less than 100 pages left. That book is getting so wild and dumb decisions are still being made. We're finding more things about the house and its history. We've met a neighbor. It's just a series of unfortunate events at this point. We're getting to like the real meat of it and figuring out what is going on. Other people are seeing it too and then we're hearing about other people's experiences with this house. So it's getting really fun and interesting. I mean, I've liked it since the beginning, so I feel like this is gonna be five stars. And it's creepy. Like last night, I was waiting for Joey to come back and it was dark and I was paranoid like looking towards the bathroom. I was just imagining figures popping out of nowhere and scaring the shit out of me. I just did not. So it is definitely creepy. And if I read that like in the dark, it probably would have scared the bejesus out of me. The goal is to finish We Used to Live Here as well as The Midwinter Witch and then potentially also the audiobook for As Good as Dead by Holly Jackson. I'm really liking it too. It did take a turn and it's kind of really intense. <laughs> I'm 48% through. In the speed I'm listening to, I probably have less than four hours left. That could be doable depending on what I decide to do today, but I also have to film a Halara haul. I have to edit a Patreon video, but I'm gonna take an editing break for a while because I've been editing all morning. Yeah, otherwise I just want to fucking read. I want to make some headway into Silver Under Nightfall as well because I don't want to like forget things I've already read. Hey, it's me. Pardon the interruption, but we've got another Halara haul, baby. Y'all know the drill by now. We're just gonna do a little try-on haul for all the stuff they sent me this time around. You might ask, Jan, is like your entire wardrobe Halara stuff by now? And I'm gonna tell you, yes, basically it is. But you know, no one's complaining. I'm sure not. Are you? I'm not. Love Halara. I've worked with them so many times this year. They've sent me even more stuff so we can start chatting Black Friday deals. First and foremost, my discount code has changed to lowercase agaton20 for 20% off instead of 15% off, which was my original discount code. So we're moving up in the world, you know? But it also saves y'all more money if you're interested in any of these pieces. All the items will be linked down below, including this jumpsuit that I'm gonna show y'all in a sec. Their pre-Black Friday sales start from November 11th and go until November 29th. They've also started this thing called Halara Circle, which is every second Sunday of the month. Basically, you spend a minimum amount of money and then they send you a free gift. This is only available for one day, every second Sunday, like I said. This time, it's gonna be... This time we're gonna get funky. No, but this time it's gonna be on November 10th, November 10th only. And if your order is $69 or more, you get this jumpsuit 
for free and then you're encouraged to share feedback on halara.com and then just keep joining the halara circle every second sunday okay comes in way more colors than this but i chose this because it was the closest to brown and i've said it in previous hauls that i'm trying to incorporate more brown into my wardrobe just because it reminds me of fall this is super comfortable the only thing is the length because i'm really really short <laughs> i'm 4 10 and a half on a good day i say this every time these are gonna need some trimming actually i don't think a heel could fix this but i do like this more than i thought i would because in the picture i wasn't sure about this part because it's not my usual style but honestly it's a little bit flattering it looks less like a little shrug thing more like a unique neckline so it's just your wide leg jumpsuit yeah i'm gonna need to like pull this up somehow because it is really long you can't even see my feet i do like this color and as the item name suggests this would be perfect for a wedding it's cute and it's comfy you could wear it every day just for work wear it's perfect for fall because of this particular color as well as the long sleeve but it's also still a breathable material just like everything else on their website i do have my discount code agaton20 for any full priced items on their website i'll link the website and all this information down below so you don't forget as well as the list of all the items i'm about to show in this try on haul with sizing and everything i usually go for extra small to small depending on the item and how previous items have fit let's get this jumpsuit off and start in on this pile of items okay first of all i'm obsessed with this bright orange i usually don't wear this color but halara allows me to like branch out i love it i love the material and on the back it's a crisscross situation i have this in a bright pink and like a mustard yellow i was like let me get the orange for fall and then i have jeans on look at these super trendy jeans y'all like the bottom i don't want to show my but the bottom is that trendy big cuff with the wide leg. It's like your skater jean kind of with a crop top like this and these big old jeans. Oh, this is goals. I've been looking for jeans like this that fit well. They're so stretchy. They're so comfy. They're like a thinner jean material, but that's what makes them so comfortable. I love these and I love the wash that I chose, this light wash. And I could wear these to work because they don't have rips in them. Like how incredible. I probably do need a belt just because they are stretchy, but you know, I'll take that over being way too tight i can do chores run errands in this all right let's try another pair of pants okay this is a completely different vibe i'm telling you halara has it all this is a stretchy work pant i think i have this in red but i got it in this cool like heather gray and it is textured you probably can't tell but it is textured and it's wide leg at the bottom the length is perfect if i just have a heel because again four ten and a half i love these these are comfy with like a black sweater or something so it'd be really cute or like a black tight long sleeve mock neck that might be my work outfit like tomorrow to be honest there's an elastic band on the back so you can see it's super stretchy highly recommend all right y'all know i loved my overalls from last time so i had to get them in a different color it does have pockets as well it's the same exact style as before wide leg as well they have a wide range of sizes as well as like pant lengths they have petite and tall length and their sizes go from extra small to 4x or tops and stuff so again highly recommend it's so hard to find pants that fit we all know that struggle so halara is the place to go my dudes but yeah ignore the bright orange with this honestly kind of a vibe okay for real if you're on the hunt for jeans that aren't jeans but they look like jeans go to halara look at this it's like leggings but like super stylish this also has the wide leg the wash is perfect i feel so like comfy casual with this orange <laughs> these are perfect length and everything like with some like chunky sneakers perfect okay my knees oh my gosh i'm so glad i got another pair of these these are just the crisscross leggings and they're super buttery they have pockets perfect for working out and they fit so well and they come in like a billion colors as well so love these if you're looking for a new simple pair of leggings with pockets because we all love pockets in this household okay i kind of look like a crayon but <laughs> also i know i say that weirdly crayon 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 i have this top in a dark blue and it has thumb holes and i love it so much so i got it in a size bigger than my other one i think i have this in a small my other one was an extra small and this one fits better i also really love this shade of red and then these they're joggers but they feel like leggings because they cinch at the bottom and they're legging material but they're so comfy i love joggers like this because they're easier to work out in rather than the ones that are like super elastic and they don't have a tie thing and then they just like fall off when you're trying to do squats or whatever but i love these they're pockets 
Okay, clearly I was on an orange kick when I was shopping for these because I got another pair of work pants, but in this dark orange color. I have this in a red that looks very similar on camera, but in person, they're definitely different. They're wide leg at the bottom. Once again, I love the wide leg trend. They're so much more comfortable than skinny jeans. Super comfy work pants. Okay, the jeans in this haul are my favorite because look at this. Okay, so it's the crisscross thing. Again, it feels like leggings because they're so stretchy and breathable, but the bottoms, look how how trendy I feel like Daisy Jones <laughs> they're like that 80s style I'm so happy I love and these are actually the perfect length like perfect length very thankful for that we have one more item okay these are actually just the exact style of leggings as the dark blue ones crisscross and the pockets but they're in this nice muted red color but that is everything so I hope you enjoyed this little interruption <laughs> to the bookish content we'll go back to it right after this I promise thank you so so much to Halara for sending me more goodies and just expanding my wardrobe. Once again, I'll have all the information for all the sales down below. Holidays are coming up, so if you have someone in your life who would love any of this stuff, go for it. Use my code, shop on November 10th, do all the things if you want to, no pressure. With that, I am gonna send you back off to regularly scheduled programming, me talking about books, probably. Hi, I'm gonna just keep wearing this because I had it on and it's Halloween Eve, so what better time? Anyway, I finished We Used to Live Here. I'm gonna agree with the hype on this one. I'm giving it five stars. It was so good. It was creepy. The ending is a little bit ambiguous, but it's also satisfying. It's so weird. I don't know how to explain it, but the progression of the story was definitely fast paced. It was riveting. I wasn't bored at all throughout this. There were some parts that still don't make sense. Like I I said those reddit thread looking things or like those documents i don't even know some of them still don't make sense to me there are also i don't want to call them plot holes but they're just like unanswered questions at the end that like don't add up they don't really make sense my friend megan and i were watching normal people earlier and then after the episode we were talking about this book because she gave it a three and we usually agree on like every book she said there were too many unanswered questions for example they said their house is in this remote location but then all of a sudden there's a neighbor close by just to drive the plot or they drive a little bit and there's a motel right there oh my god the motel scene motel Mo motel motel hotel holiday inn motel why does that sound so i can't say that word anymore i'm overthinking it but that scene was one of the creepiest in the whole book the twist where I can't even say. I also want to say a movie comp, but that would give too much away and I don't want to. I'm just gonna say it resembles one of Jordan Peele's movies and it's not Get Out. That's all I'm gonna say for real. This was an interesting take on a haunted house story. I don't even know if I would call it haunted. I lost my train of thought because Joey emerged from the bathroom. I was like, what happened to these particular characters? And then they answered that question in like a sentence. And then there was a character that kind of came out of nowhere and then never talked about again and something happened while we were with this character never talked about again so i feel like it could have been longer to be honest but at the same time i think it was perfectly paced i'm getting deja vu i feel like i said that exact same thing what did i read in this vlog oh the lover i feel like i said a similar thing this morning i'm glad i read it i feel like i want to say more but i can't think of anything can't wait to watch the adaptation i'm so happy that this is my penultimate book on my october tbr i'm not going to finish it because a discovery for witches there's no shot i have the the audiobook no shot i can finish it by the end of halloween there's no way especially if we're doing shit tomorrow around the house we're not going anywhere don't worry oh my god this is still vampathon Ooh, what can i check off a thriller i would consider this a thriller it was fast paced a book i could sink my teeth into we read outside on the balcony for a little bit and it was beautiful does this count as a spooky cover it's eerie but like this could also be a lit thick book if you didn't know it was a horror or a thriller so i wouldn't count it that i'll just count it as the thriller and book i can sink my teeth into oh also i wanted to share my girl shay gifted me a witch's guide to fake dating a demon and i wish i still had time to read this for the book about witches prompt but alas i still have to read the midwinter witch i think i could squeeze that in tonight but shay says this has been on your list long enough and you know i love demons happy bonus lair care gift and halloween i hope you enjoy this i thought it was a fun time i didn't even know she read this i'm excited
excited. It sounds like a cute time. And I think the second one is like something about a vampire, right? Wooing a vampire. No, I think it's like wooing a witch. And then the third one I think is something with a vampire. I also didn't realize this is a yellow cover. I like the pale yellow of this. You don't see that a lot for witchy books. Those are all the updates. I guess I'll talk to y'all when I finish Midwinter Witch. I'm not gonna finish As Good As Dead because I think I still have like three hours left. I'll finish that maybe tomorrow during work because I think I'm gonna be alone at work. I kinda wanna start New Moon for the vampire book to move back. I wanna at least give it the good old college try. Most likely won't finish it by tomorrow, but like what if it got really addictive and I just blow through New Moon? What if, what if? Oh, also I rewatched the first two episodes of Over the Garden Wall with Joseph. He likes it too. We're gonna watch that. That's our new hyperfixation for the foreseeable future future because there are only 10 episodes and they're like 11 minutes long. Excuse me, that is criminal. We're back, still in my devil horns. I just finished The Midwinter Witch. I'm gonna give it three stars, but I also realized this was the third in the series. I didn't even know it was a trilogy, but I read The Witch Boy probably over a year ago. No, I was still, I remember reading The Witch Boy physically from the library and I was in my apartment before my last one. So it had to be more than two years ago. Anyway, I read The Witch Boy. I saw that The Hidden Witch was an option to read. For some reason, I thought that one was the third one. I just guessed, I just saw this one and Midwinter sounded cozy and vibey and it was but now I have to go back and read the second one and then I can count it as one of my series finished for the year but I'll probably do that like in November aka a couple days. I gave it three stars. It was a cute found family situation. There was like this competition and of course our poor Aster is still getting shit for being a witch boy. He's just like I don't give a fuck give me my flower crown. He's just owning it. Both the books I read today had a character named Charlie in it so that's weird and then if I start New Moon we got Charlie Swan too so so that's fucking weird. It's the great big pumpkin, Charlie Brown. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm gonna do a fun fact on winter because midwinter witch and all the ones that came up are just about snow. I think the most interesting one slash the one that not a lot of people know probably is that all snowflakes have six sides. Even though no two of them look the same, they all have six sides because the hydrogen and oxygen molecules in the ice crystals join together to form a hexagonal structure every time. Not not only did I give you the fact, but I gave you the reasoning behind it. Look at me go. I gotta set up my Patreon bulletin post because I want that to go up tomorrow and I want to type on my creamy keyboard. <laughs> I also really want to start New Moon, so maybe I'll just do like a couple chapters. Ooh, I'm looking at the poll for Carmilla patrons for the next Keep It or Kick It color. It's looking like a clear winner, my dudes. What color is that? Stay tuned. I can know, but you can't. All right, fuck everything else. We're starting New Moon for the first time ever. I have my You Had Me at Vampire Romance bookmark. There's the prologue. I'm scared. But look how pretty. Happy Halloween. Woo. Am I scary yet? Am I? I'm wearing this to work. Halloween's going well, thank you for asking. I have started Graveyard Shift. I'm only nine pages in, but I like the writing so far, we'll see. The thing with ML Rio is I DNF'd if we were villains, but I keep getting FOMO over it. And it is on KU, so maybe I'll try again on Kindle, because I did sell my special edition copy on Pango, so. Oh well, oh well. This is my Halloween book. Did I say that already? I don't know. I also am unhinged when autumn comes around and my mood just goes to fantasy. Spooky books too, but fantasy. Even though I know damn well I read fantasy so slowly, but fantasy novellas I can handle even though I'm still reading Silver Under Nightfall. I'm not gonna start this now, but my girl Megan showed me this book yesterday. I just walked past the new section and this was a face out, so I was like, okay, I'll get it. We can buddy read it. And there's dragons! And the second book just came out and it's only a duology, so we'll see if easing into the chunkier fantasies would help. Speaking of, book of the month options 
options came out and I'm pretty sure two of the five were chunky fantasies that I chose. I don't know what's wrong with me when it comes to fall. I'm just like unhinged with everything. I'm just like, yep, purchase. <laughs> because I'm like, fall is such a short time. I am gonna indulge, okay? When it comes to winter, everything's just droopy and I don't like Christmas decor. So I'm not gonna be spending money on decor. I'm gonna eat my leftover quesadilla now in my car and then we're gonna have a second round of our employee Halloween party. I went to the first round. I made these yarn pumpkins. I'll try to show y'all later. I had some Oreo balls that my manager made. I tried candy corn again. Every year I try it a couple times to see if my taste buds change and like they really don't. Okay, I've unzipped my onesie because it's fucking hot. Occam's Razor has been mentioned in like three of the books I've read recently. Like I know Hitchcock Hotel mentioned it. I think we used to live here also mentioned it. And now Graveyard Shift. I don't know what that says about anything. Halloweenies. <laughs> is that what you've been calling them all day? No. Wait. Halloweenies? Joey is blocking the light, I think. I'm not. I'm can not. you, can you? Lighting guy? Chop chop. Seriously, that's all I am. He wanted to be here to see you what's good? in, yeah, thank you. What's in this Lair Care package from Shay. From Press Play Shay. I will link her channel down below. She is hilarious and she has impeccable move, movie taste. Probably. And music taste. But music taste is what I meant. Oh. In but case I, you didn't know. I've said that before. <laughs> she knows bear tooth. She knows bear tooth. <laughs> I'm gonna say that every time. <laughs> this is not part of the Lair Care package, but I got Laura Olympus Volume 7. I actually used a gift card for this, so it's a gift. So many gifts. Halloween is great. Uh, how did you plan it for it to come right on Halloween? I also have another one from Jamie waiting in the package room as my 11k. Congratulations. Oh. Everyone's oh, so cute. Okay, so many goodies. Oh what God, is I this? What is pies. happening? I see moon pies. Yep, there are moon pies. Oh my God, moon pies. Moon pies. Why? You like moon pies? I love moon Ooh, pies. Ooh, they look good. They're like, it's like basically a really, really soft s'more. I've had similar ones from the Philippines. Here, how, did, one. Yeah, how did you know? What is this orange? Thing. Oh, oh my, my god. god, shut up. Happy Halloween to me. What's in here? Ah, it's just a little bag of candy. No. <laughs> You're so fucking cute. Oh my god. There's eyeballs. How oh did god. you plan this They're so fangs? well? fangs. Oh my god, it's an ear. It's a fucking gummy ear. The fact that this all showed up on Halloween is incredible. I can make a whole human you from should. these. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Oh, look how cute. <gasps> Is that white chocolate? Kit you Kat? don't like white chocolate, right? I don't know, maybe. I, I like know. white chocolate. <laughs> Thanks, Shay. Yeah, you do. Okay, what is this? Okay, yes, this is for you. Because there's two of them. This is why she asked me. Shut up! She got me a shirt? <gasps> Shut up. I literally just told her the other day how much I love this shirt. Little did I know. Shut up. It's from one of her favorite small businesses. It's Music Valley Archive. Oh. We're matching. Okay, this one's a medium. <gasps> Bellwick. This is so cute. Okay, she Whoa. literally posted on the Discord. She's like, oh my God. I don't even know what this is. I gotta look up what it is. <laughs> She's like, my favorite small business reposted me. And I was like, oh my God, I love that shirt. And I was, I and almost bought it. And it's comfort colors. I know. I, that's why I asked you. Or no, I didn't ask you. I just knew. No way. Yay, Shay, are you fucking out of your mind? Shay, I swear. It says, along the banks of the Red River lies sleepy village of Adams, Tennessee. Oh my God, can we go there? For decades, the town has captured the attention of a cult ghost hunters and paranormal investigators from around the world why because these cursed grounds are still haunted by the infamous bell witch that's so dope this is cool i thought at first i thought it was blair witch i was about to fucking cream america's greatest ghost story ew not cream cream i'm a hoe for sleeve designs cream, thank you move. so much shay i'm so excited wow this is sick Ooh, spooky necklace i'm gonna wear this tonight <laughs> it, glows in the dark. it glows in the dark it's a little bat oh my god shay oh my god there's two we can match oh my god we can match Ooh, vampire things i almost said fox vampire fangs socks shut up these are adorable oh, i'm gonna throw up i'm Shit. literally gonna throw up what is this what do you spend your money on oh my god ping pong ball oh oh it's nice there's a skull this is so cute yeah. wow 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 what the wow 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 fuck? there's just shit coming out of this mug is it a mug i'm assuming it's a, it's a mug. mug it's a mug <gasps> that's Whoa. so cool okay you can't really it looks like a plain <laughs> <laughs> wow it looks like a plain black mug but like embossed on it you really can't tell no you can't it's, it's subtle it's bats 
I love freaking that. Bats. It's freaking bad. That I is so Halloween. cute. Shay! Oh my god, we can paint our pumpkin. We can paint. Oh my god, wait, that's so cute. <gasps> I'm that's gonna do this. I'm gonna try to do this tonight at five time. Mm -hmm. Home of the Wicked Witch and her little monsters. Oh my god, you're a little monster. <laughs> Isn't this for people with children usually? Probably. But you're my little monster. That's so cute. <laughs> I think I saw that at Target. Welcome home. What the fuck, dude? She is just wait. Is that a letter? Feeding my soul. Oh my what god. Is what is? Okay, I almost shown my. If Jan is unavailable, please leave in care of a Joey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my address isn't even on here. Jan, Queen of Vamps, Agaton, six six six, the Lair, the Veil of the Ether. Okay, so this is clearly not a real envelope. That's so funny. That is so cute. Yeah, cause my address is on the yeah. box. I'm stupid. Look at the little drawing. Oh my god, is that supposed to be Stormy? Tell me that's Stormy. She has a horse named Stormy. Oh my god, that's right. I always forget you. Oh my god, horse. Stormy has fangs. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually gonna throw up that stuff. <coughs> what is this? Is this a children's book? <laughs> oh my god, stickers. Oh my god, stickers. They're sloths. Wait, I'm not even showing any of this. I'm so excited. They're glittery stickers for my journal. What is that? What is that? It's so cute. It looks like a little like beaver or something on a pumpkin. It might be a rat actually, but it's cute. I think it's a rat. I think it is. Yeah. Oh my god, stop. Wait, there's more shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, from Shakespeare. You bought this in France for me? Shay. What? I just got chills. I just <laughs> It came all the way from France? From the Louvre? Isn't that where the freaking Mona Lisa is? Yeah, this is so pretty. I'm literally gonna cry. I think I'm gonna cry. This is so cute. This is me. I am Gee, bat. How did you manage to stuff all this in this box? I am bat. Do not take cherries. Not even one. <laughs> this is gonna go right next to my Gustavo the ghost. Oh my god. It's me in the morning! <laughs> If you take my cherries, I will be angry. Why is this the most wholesome thing I've ever received in my life? This was literally me. Oh, oh I will never. No, this is me. Sorry. <laughs> I will never be happy again. <laughs> His huge ass fangs. That is the dorkiest looking bat I've ever. Oh, it's from Shakespeare and Company. This is from Paris. Are you fucking kidding? Wow. I am bat. I do not like mornings. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there's a you in favorite. That's how you know. It's not from the America. Dude. Wow. I can't believe she got me a shirt. And a moon pie. And a moon pie. And a spooky necklace. Hopefully you don't like them. They're Here, you can dirt. have two. These are so cute. I'm bringing these to work and using them as What's little- Oh wait, I can't called? because What's Halloween's over and not everyone's just spooky. Wait, Music there's a letter. Okay, I'm not gonna read this whole thing. Oh my god, stop. Stop. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> no, I'm gonna cry. It's on the back too. I know, I'm gonna cry. Your little doodles are giving me life. Chapter one, the contents. No, I'll read it later. This wow. is an off-camera moment, okay? Shay, Cheyenne. I love you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Amazing. I wanna know how she managed to get it here exactly on Halloween. Happy fucking Halloween to me. That's some great planning. I know. The most thoughtful fucking person. I swear to God. Yeah, these are so cute. Little ping pong ball. This is so adorable. What is it? You just paint a little. It's a ghost, so it's already white. What is it holding? A candy corn? It's holding a candy corn. Oh my god, that's incredible. An audiobook activity. I'm just in awe. Well, on that note, time to get hallo waste. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> it's Thursday fucking night. We're gonna. Hallow waste. <laughs> Joey who doesn't drink <laughs> Me who doesn't either anymore <laughs> Rarely ever This is insane This is wild I feel I so loved I can't wait to try, try this out I love this I also love this the I'm Music Valley Archive I'm checking these guys out I'm losing my mind I'm gonna go send Shay two paragraphs of thank yous And go on with my Halloween With our Halloween I went to Target and I bought the Franken crispy things That was successful There was one thing of candy eyeballs left Excuse our messy bed, by the way. We never make our bed. I think it's overrated. If you make your bed, kudos to you, but I think it's pointless. Unless you're having guests over. Anyway, I didn't buy too much that weren't on my, like, list to buy stuff, so. Woo! Okay, Shay, you're incredible. I'm gonna go text you now. Thank you. Oh yeah. All right, we're back in bat mode, people. We're gonna make our Franken Krispies. <laughs> That's what I'm officially calling them. We got home style Rice Krispies because I'm not making shit from scratch. Another bag of bones because I ate them all. <laughs> got makeup wipes, loofahs. We got food coloring. Make this stuff green. This is inspired by Sarah Karali, by the way. Just like everything else in my life right now. Candy eyeballs, black writing icing. And then I got this thing of sprinkles because they didn't have just black sprinkles. And I didn't want to do what Sarah did, which was just like drawing the hair. So we're gonna use the purple sprinkles. This one has like purple, black, and orange. That could be cute. Ooh, purple, green, and black. We'll see. Maybe we'll make them all different colors. Who knows? Who cares? Now we're gonna cue the B-roll of me attempting to do this while Joey watches The Office. And then we're gonna show him how cute our Franken things are. All right, ready, go.
listen, sometimes the vision just doesn't work out. Okay, look at them. They're kind of cute and quirky. Okay, Joey, you can come react. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I look all derpy. <laughs> Where's this one's mouth? Which one? This guy's, he's just like. That's his mouth, he's like. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yep. Yep. Oh my god, these actually turned out really good. Really? Yeah. Aren't they cute? I wouldn't have been able to do this as well. <laughs> You're so cute. Okay, I literally cried reading Shay's letter. Joey was like, read it out loud. And my voice was like breaking and tears were falling. I was like, oh. so sweet. In addition to all of that, Jamie got me two books. Not one, but two. We got episode 13, which I do have on KU, but every time I'm at any bookstore and I see it, I'm like, this is a nice paper bag. That's why I've been putting it off. Well, also because it's by Craig DeLuey and I hated Suffer the Children, but I feel like I'd like this more for some reason. I really love this cover with the hands, the creepy hands on the window. It's in a quick, like epistolary mixed media format. So hopefully I fly through this. I've heard mixed things about this when it first came out. Thank you, Jamie, for this, as well as A Haunted Ever After after by Jen DeLuca. This sounds so cute. I had the audiobook for it on Libby and it was expiring soon and I was like, I'm not gonna read this. So I returned it. And then lo and behold, it's here in my hands. Oh my God, there's a ghost. There's a ghost in the background. Shut up. I didn't see that until now. <laughs> That's so cute. I think this guy owns a coffee shop or something and it's one of those I don't think he's a ghost. I think there's a ghost in the town or something It's love at first haunting in a seaside town that raises everyone's spirits in this new series. Oh, it's a series I've never read a Jen DeLuca. Cass has almost convinced me to read Well Met or whatever the first one is in that series I haven't read those and I could get behind them because I've heard really good things about those But I think I'm gonna read this one first by this author. We just watched Ready or not for the first time it was really good we get the hype the ending scene kind of reminds me of another movie so it wasn't too shocking for me but i like the concept and i usually don't like game type of things in movies but that one was good i'd give it a five out of five wow it's so windy i think i'm gonna read for the rest of the night i'm like really sad that october's over but i'll try to read as much as i can probably won't finish it until my first november vlog because i will be ending this either tonight or tomorrow depending on how tired i get tonight so let's do this got to a rat scene the first rat scene of i've heard many in this book i'm now at the 1 a.m chapter from theo's perspective so 34 pages in and it's only like 108 pages i believe so honestly doable but it's also like almost 10 p.m and i've worked tomorrow but i got a bingo on the vampathon bingo card and that's pretty much all i wanted and i think each prompt for that bingo was a different book so that's satisfying i don't know if i'm gonna be able to finish another book in October. I'm at 24 books currently and I think it's gonna stay that way, which is fine. Anything over 20 I'm satisfied with for a monthly wrap-up. And if we end on 24, that means reread, rewrite, burn, have eight even rounds because math is cool. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna do what I can and I'll talk to y'all probably one more time. All right, y'all, as expected, I did not finish Graveyard Shift and I'm updating the next morning to close out this vlog. I got to page 58. To be honest, I was falling asleep, so I'm really not sure, but it is kind of boring. And it keeps talking about Occam's Razor, but each chapter has been a different character so far. I don't know, I feel like we're not getting closer to figuring anything out, but I heard the ending makes up for the slowness of it, so we'll see. Maybe ML Rio is just not for me, who knows? But Vampathon has been fun. This programming vlog has been fun. I have really bad October saddies today. I'm literally like mourning the loss of the last month and I didn't even get up early this morning to like go to the gym and whatever. So hopefully I go to the gym later. I don't know. My body hurts. I don't even know what I read in this vlog. I'm gonna check Goodreads. I should have done that before this, but I am nothing if not unprepared. First of all, thank you to Jody again for inviting me to co-host again this year. It is always such like an honor and a pleasure to co-host. Okay, I read The Mid Winter Witch gave that three stars. The Lover gave it four stars. We Used to Live Here gave it five stars. Third Gilmore Girl, also five stars. Hollow, four stars. Coup de Grasse, four stars. It's one, two, three, four, five, six books in six days. That is perfect, 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 perfect. Two of them were graphic novels. One was a novella, one was a short story, and then two were full novels. Great mix. Still listening to the same audiobook that I have been for over a week now. I have two hours left of As Good as Dead. That's probably going to be four or five stars also. 
and that's wild to me because like I said in my last do your worst episode YA thrillers are not usually my thing but the fact that I like I wouldn't say binged this series but read the whole thing in a very short amount of time compared to how I read other series it's just wild to me let alone rating all of them highly it surprised me and I heard the show is bad but I think I'm gonna watch it anyway good news is being in the middle of all these books I am gonna be finishing probably quite a bit of books in the early November days here so there's that for new moon I think I got definitely just like a chapter or two in and then silver under nightfall I got over 100 pages in so I'm making progress on a few books aardvark picks are up today so if you want to see what the November books are and if you're interested in them I do have a discount code jam to get your first box for four dollars in free shipping I'm just gonna end the vlog with a shameless plug thank you so much for watching thank you for participating in vampathon if you did thank you for 11k insane if you made it to the end of this video the only correct emojis are vampy emojis so the coffin the bat the vampires the blood drip any of those hope y'all had a happy halloween and a five star day don't forget to do some self-care and i'll see you in my next video bye